So what I'd like to do is work through this problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to verify this by using our sum and difference formulas. So when automatically, anytime I'm going to see any type of simplifier equation, when I see the sum or difference of two angles with using my trigonometric functions, I know I can apply my formulas. So there's two formulas that we need to remember. First one is the cosine, since we're dealing with cosine, the cos the sum of two angles for the cosine is going to be cosine of u times cosine of v minus sine of u times sine of v. And then the difference of two angles of cosine is going to be very similar, but it's going to be cosine of u times cosine of v plus sine of u times sine of v. All right, so what we're going to do, yeah, let's put it right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to apply these two formulas for our new angles. So we're going to say this will be u, this is v. This is u, this is v. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply both formulas to both of these terms. So let's use the difference one first. So therefore, I'm going to use this formula to kind of evaluate for the cosine of u, our x minus pi halves. So by writing this out, I'll have cosine of u, which is x, times cosine of pi fourths plus the sine of x times the sine of pi over 4 minus. Uh, now I'm going to use the sum formula, and I'm just going to apply in these formulas, where this is going to be my x, and this will be my v, or my u and my v. So now I have minus the cosine, put this over in parentheses, minus the cosine of u, which is x, times the cosine of v, which is pi over 4, minus uh, minus the sine of x times the sine of v, which is pi over 4. And that all has to equal negative 1. Now, notice how I put this in parentheses, right? Because you're minusing the cosine of this. Well, cosine of x plus pi over halves equals all of this, so we've got to make sure we put this in parentheses. Now, to get rid of the parentheses, what we can do is we can apply our subtraction sign to both of them. Therefore, we could say this is now going to be negative, and this will be positive. Okay, So by distributing the negative sign, I can now get rid of my parentheses. So before we even evaluate, we notice that we have a negative term, right? And we can say, all right, can we even simplify this? Do we have a negative cosine of x, cosine of pi over 4? and a positive one. So I don't need to evaluate, and I already know that these two terms are going to add up to the, um, they're going to add up to uh, 0. Then these two terms are exactly the same, right? So we could say 2 sine of x times sine of pi over 4 equals negative 1. OK, so now we look at sine of pi over 4, and we say, all right, how are we going to evaluate for the sine of you know, pi over 4? Um, wait a minute, what does this question ask? This actually says, say, it, says, it doesn't say verify. I'm sorry, we have to solve. OK, so the sine of pi over 4, we go to our unit circle. Pi over 4 is right here, which is square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And this actually says find all the solutions. OK, now find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So we have 2 sine of x square root of 2 over 2 equals negative 1. Now this one gets students pretty confused. All right, But remember this, guys. 3 times 4 times 2. Is that equal to 2 times 3 times 4? Is that the same? Yeah. So guys, right now I have three terms multiplied by each other. I have 2 times sine times square root of 2 over 2. You guys can see that these 2's are going to divide into 1. But if you don't, just rewrite it. And then what you'll notice is, OK, yes, those do divide into 1. So now you're left with the square root of 2 times sine of x equals negative 1. Now to solve for sine of x, you divide by square root of 2. Therefore, let's move it up here. Now we have sine of x equals negative 1 over the square root of 2. Rationalize the denominator. And we're equal to a negative square root of 2 over 2. 
So now we go back to our unit circle and we say, what angles then do we have where the sine value is equal to a negative square root of 2 over 2? Well, it's going to be not pi over 4, 2 pi, 3 pi, or 4 pi. But now we're going to deal with this 5 pi. So not 6 pi, but now 7 pi. So therefore, we can now say, so if I say the sine of x, so when does when, the sine of what angles equal negative square root of 2 divided by 2? And we can say the solutions are 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And I'm sorry, what angles, when I take the sine of them, equal negative square root of 2 over 2 within our restriction of 0 and 2 pi? And those are going to be your only two angles. All right?